Who doesn't love a great Nook? This Intel Nook is the new 13th generation Intel Nook Pro. It's a four inch by four inch little box. But you know, I frankly, I didn't really want to review this one even though it's launching today because uh, we just did the 12th generation version of this. And these things are so similar that I thought that that sounds like a boring comparison. So instead what we did was we purchased the ASRock version, which is their Nook version with the exact same processor in it. And uh, we're gonna have a little head to head competition today. But hold on, let's back up. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna talk all about the Raptor Lake 13th generation core processors in these little tiny four inch by four inch form factors. So today we're gonna take a look at the Intel Nook ANK13 because that's the new Nook version that we have here. And then we're also gonna take a look at this unit which is the ASRock Industrial, by the way, Nux Box 1360p D4. Now that means a whole bunch of things there but really the Nux is important here because you'll see that there are two different chassis and they have different features. Frankly, I wanted to get the Nook, not the Nux box but we, we bought the Wrong one. So this is what we have. Still, these two units both use the Intel Core i7 1360p processor, and it's an upgrade to the 1260p processor that we had in the previous generation NUC 12 Pro. Before we get too far, I just want to say thank you to our STH YouTube members for helping us buy this so we have something else to go review other than just what Intel sends. If you do want to help out, you can always join down below. It's super appreciated if you can. But the game plan today is we're going to go look at the hardware behind these two units. We're then going to look at the performance power control consumption noise because there are definitely some things there. Talk about our key lessons learned because I can totally see why some folks would want to go buy the Intel Nook and other folks would want to buy the ASRock industrial unit. And frankly, if you're just on Newegg or Amazon or something like that, it's pretty darn hard to tell like which one you would prefer. And so I think I have an opinion that now that we've gone through and tested both of these that I'll share in our key lessons learned. With that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, so first let's look at the Intel NUC Pro 13th gen. And what you're gonna see is something that is very similar to what we saw in the 12th gen. There are only a couple differences that I'll explain shortly. We have two USB type A ports and these are USB 3.2 gen two ports. So they're 10 gigabit per second ports. And then we also have a headset combo jack. On the top, it's solid, although this does pop off. And then on the sides, you have vents. But the real thing that you wanna see is the rear of the unit. Now on the back of the unit, you're gonna see a lot of things that look very similar. We have another USB 3.2 2 Gen 2 10 gigabit per second port, as well as a USB 2 port. Again, this is almost the exact same as we saw on the 12th gen here. The next thing that you'll notice is that we get our two HDMI ports, which are always welcome. We also get an ethernet port, although this one is upgraded to the Intel i226 versus the old generation, which is an Intel i225. And then to me, the standout feature is that you get two Thunderbolt 4 ports, which are USB uh, type C, and they're also USB 4 ports. And so those are super cool. The other thing, by the way, is that you can actually run two display outputs out of there too. So this little box can actually drive four or displays. With that, let's get over to the ASRock industrial unit. Something that you're gonna notice, I think immediately, is that you know on the front you get two USB ports. These are USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. These are 10 gigabit per second ports, although they're not labeled. I wish that ASRock would actually go do that. You get a combo jack, and then you get two USB type C ports. Now, these are kind of interesting on this system. One of them is a Thunderbolt 4 slash USB 4 port. The other one is a USB 3.2 Gen 2, so 10 gigabit per second port. Both of them though do support display port uh, 1.4 a output now on both sides of the system we get vents and on the top it looks like we get vents but this is actually just a top and then uh, on the back that's obviously what we want to see right here we get two hdmi 2.0 b ports and then we also get two USB type A ports and these are also USB 3.2 gen two ports. Our LAN port is an Intel i226LM which means we get two and a half gig ethernet. With that I think it's time to get inside these systems. One quick note when you do get inside these systems, these look about the same, right? Where you have rubber feet with the screws inside, there's four screws and all kinds of stuff. They are a little bit different though. Uh, the Intel ones don't actually pop out. On the other side, the ASRock industrial one, uh, these are not captive screws, so these, these will just fall out. One other small difference on the inside of the lids is that on the Intel version, you can see that we have our little copper heat spreader with a the little uh, thermal pads and stuff like that. We don't have that on the ASRock industrial one. So both of these units are fairly similar inside. You'll see that we have uh, two DDR4 30 200 so dim slots. One other feature that these share in common is that both of them have M.2 slots and then underneath they have the Wi-Fi slots. And both of these come with Intel Wi-Fi 6E, which is awesome. But the one thing that I should mention on the M.2 slots is that while they are both PCIe Gen 4, 
I think I feel more comfortable running a PCIe Gen 4 in the Intel Nook Pro versus the ASRock unit. And the reason for that is that this one does not have any, like, any cooling down here. There's just nothing there to cool it. This at least has the thermal pads and that like copper plate and all that kind of stuff. And so it seems like the PCIe Gen 4 SSDs are a little bit better in the Nook 13 Pro. And the ASRock ones, you can run PCIe Gen 4, but we were getting some overheating and therefore limited performance. So you'll see like the SSD just kind of drops in performance because there's just not enough cooling on the bottom of the system. Probably the biggest difference aside from the cooling for the M.2 is the fact that the Intel Nook Pro has an additional M.2 SATA slot. So you could put another drive in there if you wanted, like have like a boot SATA drive and then have like an M.2 NVMe for like kind of like high performance application storage. With that, let's get to performance. Okay, so let's talk about the performance of these two units because I think that is a huge story here, right? The uh, They have the exact same processor. Just kind of looking at the 1360p, it is a slight upgrade over the 1260p, but you still have the same core count that you had previously. That means that we get four performance cores and eight efficient cores, and that's literally the exact same. We also get like a 96 EU Intel XE graphics and all that kind of stuff. So it's just kind of like, it, it seems like it's a very incremental upgrade over the Alder Lake 12 gen. And while we're using the Intel Nook Pro for our 1360p numbers, I just want to kind of show you the difference between these on a number of benchmarks when we just kind of look at these two compared. So we, we just looked at the benchmarks for the 1360, which is the Intel Nook Pro one, but I want to show you the difference between these two. Because you would originally think like, hey, they have the same processor, so they have to be the same performance, and that is not true at all. So we're going to flash some Geekbench 5 and Geekbench 6 runs. You're going to see that the Intel Nook 13 Pro is actually faster than the ASRock one. You're also going to see just kind of when we look at some of the other workloads that we run, we also will see that the Intel Nook Pro is faster in those as well. So I guess the question is, well, why is that happening? And for that, let's get to our power consumption and noise because I think that'll have the answer for us. Now, I know a lot of folks are going to want to know about the power consumption and noise. So I figured uh, let's go get our little test set up and uh, let's see how this works. So here we have the Intel Nook and this comes with a 120 watt power supply, which uh, which is pretty substantial, actually. The ASRock unit only comes with a 90 watt Akbell unit. So definitely a different size in terms of the power uh, power brick. But let's see how they perform. And also I want to see how loud they are. OK, so first let's work on the ASRock unit. I'm just going to go plug this thing in real quick and then uh, it's starting up. So let me let you hear the startup noise. And as this is starting up, you'll see that the decibel meter will go to in the like 35, 36-ish decibel range. The noise floor in the studio is about 34 dBA. Okay, so let's look at the power consumption at idle on the Windows desktop. You're gonna see anywhere from about like maybe 11 and a half to about 15, 16 watts. It's bouncing around quite a bit in that range. Okay, so now let's go see uh, what we can get this thing to do in terms of power consumption and noise. So you're gonna see that right now we're at about 83.7, 83.8 watts or so. And then what's happening is we're seeing that this is going down to just under 40 watts. So we're kind of hitting that, you know, kind of like power level where we get that little boost of turbo speed. And then it's coming back down into the sub 40 watt range. So let's go stress this, see how it sounds. And so I'm gonna hit a little stress right there. And you're gonna see we're at about 82, 83, somewhere in there watts. But now let's go look at the Intel unit. Okay, so now it's time to go and plug in the Intel unit right here. And you can see that we're now using a little over 30 watts uh, as this thing is starting up. You'll see at idle, we're still in that like, you know, say 35 to 36 dBA range, just above that 34 dBA noise floor in the studio. And power consumption though on the idle side is awesome. I mean, we're like down into like five, six, seven, eight, nine watts. So this thing's actually idling at lower power than the ASRock unit, which I was really surprised about. I thought that this was gonna be a higher power unit. And let me just let you hear this, hopefully at idle. I don't know if you're even gonna be able to hear it, but see if you can hear the idle. Okay, let's uh, stress the CPU a little bit here and let you listen. So you're gonna see that we actually just crested uh, 92, 93 watts somewhere in there. Uh, it's definitely a lot, lot higher than we saw on the ASRock system. It's definitely getting way louder. We're about 43, 45 dBA. It's also holding that higher power level a little bit longer. Okay, and now we've dropped down into that 60 watt range. 
Wow, I can really feel the exhaust coming right out of the back of this thing. But it's actually sitting just at, you know, 59, 60 watts. So it's really staying right there, which I'm pretty surprised about. Okay, so that was like a really interesting finding, right? The ASRock unit seemed to have had a higher idle power consumption than the Intel NUC 13 Pro. On the other hand, this ASRock unit didn't hit the same like kind of max power consumption. The Intel was definitely higher on that. And we also saw the power level, you know, that was like in that like kind of mid 80s or something like that, uh, watt range for the ASRock unit. That, that was only held for a couple seconds. I think the Intel one actually held it's like 88 to 90 something uh, watt power level like a lot longer and then this thing rested more in that like 60 watt range so at you know after that initial burst of speed the intel nook was definitely louder it was using more power but it was also faster so i guess it's kind of interesting just to see the different profile right like the asrock unit kind of has that burst of speed goes five gigahertz and then drops back down and then you see the intel nook that'll go and you know spend a little bit longer up there but then it'll drop down to maybe not the same power level that the the asrock unit does so that was actually a really kind of cool finding and it also impacts you know how you think about these systems because if you need something that's bursty well maybe the asrock is fine but if you have something that's more, you know you need more consistent performance you probably want the intel nook just something to think about Okay, now for all of these mini PC videos, I always like to have some key lessons or like, what do we learn from having this? And especially not just one unit, but having two units. I mean, there has to be some key takeaways, right? And I think I have a couple of them. So the first thing is that, let's talk about price real quick. These things are probably gonna retail, my guess is somewhere in the 630 to maybe like like 680 range. We're doing this video before the Intel NUC 13 uh, is actually launching. So this will go live hopefully on launch day. And I asked Intel for pricing and they just kind of gave me some vague, like it's gonna be like 300 something dollars to like over a thousand dollars different kits and i'm like well that's not what i asked i asked for the msrp of this unit but my guess is it's not gonna be too far off from the previous gen the asrock unit has been out for a little bit longer and so we are starting to see a little bit of discounts like i just looked at newegg and i think it was like like 679 dollars but then you got a free 16 gig so dim so since the pricing is going to be fairly similar it's going to be tens of dollars difference between these units let me kind of give you another way to look at it so the intel nook used less power at idle but it used more power when it was under load. It also held those high power states a little bit longer. And that means that this actually did perform quite a bit better than the ASRock rack unit, but it wasn't like, you know, like 2X better or anything like that. They're still in the same general ballpark. And so to me, the ASRock unit feels like it's optimized for lower power and lower noise. And yeah, I totally get that. What I will say though, and this is really hard, hopefully you saw some of it when we did the external and internal overviews, it just it feels like the NUC 13 Pro has just that little bit extra in terms of refinement. And I'll give you a couple examples, like the USB ports on this are actually labeled with what they are. You also see things like inside, you get the extra SATA M.2 slot. And by the way, the both the M.2 drives, they have that little thermal pad and copper, you know, transfer plate and all that kind of stuff. So you actually can get some heat dissipation. So running a PCIe Gen 4 SSD in the NUC Pro feels like it's more kind of possible than it does in the ASRock one, which if you run a workload that's heavy on your SSD and you have a PCIe Gen 4 SSD, you're most likely going to see that it will throttle, which is why we have an inexpensive PCIe Gen 3 SSD in here. So in a lot of the reviews that you see online that compare two products that are fairly similar, somebody will always just say like, oh, it depends on who you are and like, you know, which one's better and stuff. But I think that I'm not even gonna go there. I'm gonna say maybe if you want a little bit lower power, maybe that's why you get the ASRock one or maybe it's cheaper at some point or something like that but unless that's you pretty much the better answer is just to get the NUC 13 Pro because this is the uh, this is the better unit it's faster it had lower idle power consumption and also just had more features and more refinement so I feel like overall this was a much better package and hey guys I hope you like this video comparing these two and getting an honest bit of feedback in terms of which one is better and if you did like this video and you're still watching well why don't you go check out one of our other videos because we do a ton of great content and we have a bunch more coming and speaking of that well why don't you give this video a like click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with any of those great new videos as always thanks for watching and have an awesome day